so freaking crazy in Hanoi right now because it's in time for Lunar New Year's. Literally everyone and their dogs and their children are outside right now on a moped. And I think that hectic energy feeds into my hunger. At this point, I'm just making all types of excuses to eat more. I'm in Hanoi with my family in time for Vietnamese Lunar New Year, Tet. The sound of moped engines vibrate in the air and angry grocery shoppers haggle for the best produce to feed their family. Small plastic stools are sprawled across the city and hungry patrons are slurping away. I'm on a mission to find the best street food in Hanoi and to share what I taste, smell, hear, feel with you in this beautiful city. This is 100 hours of Vietnamese street food in Hanoi. Uh, is it okay? Bun Ka Kai Si, fish noodles. So Bun just refers to rice noodles. And what they specialize in, fried fish skin and the fish broth. You can kind of see a lot of the herbs, lemongrass, star anise, and the broth is like not oily at all and it's super fresh. I do want to lighten it up a little bit with a bit of calamansi though. And this is the most prevalent citrus fruit in Southeast Asia. You just kind of want to squeeze it like this. And this really adds a nice bit of acidity, sprinkle a little bit of that excess on top of the fried fish roll that I ordered as well. Wow. I feel like fish pho is something that you can't get in the US. Mm. So the herb that's on top is kind of like Vietnamese morning glory, like watercress. And that's a really nice like bit of refreshing note to it. I'm gonna try some of the fish skin too. Super crispy. And even with that broth, it stays pretty crispy. They took off the fish skin and fried it separately as kind of like a topping. If you make fish soup with the skin intact, it's gonna get too oily and too unctuous, you know? It's not gonna get that clean broth. So they only used the protein and the bones to make a nice clear stock and then topped it off with like that crunchy fish skin, which I think is like great technique if you think about it. It's delicious. The breading on this is really interesting. It's almost like held together by all the fish and rolled in panko-like breading outside. I'm gonna dip it into some nuk nam, which is fish sauce, vinegar, and sugar. Smells great. Mmm. This is something I've never had before. Fish, and inside is a pork filling with coriander, black pepper. It's not fishy at all. And again, it's fried so well that even when I dip it, like double dip in the nuk nam, it doesn't get soggy. What's actually also special is that they have a slice of pineapple on top. And it's also seasoned with tomatoes. And the combination between all the herbs, the lemongrass, the tomato, and the pineapple is really, really nice. It's like a very light bowl of noodles. So it's kind of perfect for like a hangover soup. Major success. Very happy. They have matching I'm, bucket hats. I think I don't like fish, but this isn't a fish at all. Fried fish is really crispy and it's good. It's good. But I strongly recommend this when you visit. Mm. Here, where am I now? <laughs> Hanoi. <laughs> I think it's frozen. <laughs> is just bringing all the customers in like you could smell it from streets and streets away they're grilling here are Vietnamese meatballs and they're kind of flat and a little pump like this and it has a leaf on the other side it's like a pork meatball it has a really nice charred flavor it's gonna lie a little bit dry but because you have the dipping sauce it's totally okay so this is called Bun Cha Tit Nung 
So you have the noodles on one side and you dip it into the concentrated broth and then you slurp away. And then with a little bit of jajo dipped into the same sauce. So now I'm gonna move on to the pho ga. And ga is chicken, so this is kind of like the Vietnamese version of a chicken noodle soup. Wow. They have this like gigantic cauldron of just chicken carcass, just barely simmering. And look how clear this broth is. And that's just a beautiful consomme broth. The reason why it's so clear is because it's at a rolling simmer. You know, if it boils, the fat is going to get emulsified, but you can see that the fat kind of splits and rises to the top and it's clear. That's when it's been simmered for a long time at low heat so that it doesn't emulsify. Wow, the broth is everything. Broth is everything. And I like how chicken here has yellow skin. It means that the chicken has matured. This is an aged chicken, which also means that there's a lot of flavor in it as well. Time equals flavor. I think what I really like about Vietnamese food is how fresh everything is. It's a lot of herbs. It's simple flavors, but incredibly nuanced. So I feel like I could keep on eating and eating and eating. To be fair, I'm like that with most food though. bouncers in front. That side is kind of like a drive through where like all the mopeds kind of pull up and then they just say like how many they want because they only sell one thing and one thing only at this place and it's bo ko. It's a dried beef Vietnamese papaya salad and you have like beef shavings, like some of the beef jerky and like all these different types of like processed beef on top. A lot of herbs as well. Very fresh. The texture on the green papaya is really nice. What's really different about Thai papaya salad and Vietnamese bo ko is that one, it's not spicy and it's more refreshing and a lot of nok nam. Every restaurant has their own nok nam and that's kind of like the secret to the business. This one is a lot more herbaceous. But I'm a little surprised though. Like I don't think I would be full for lunch with just one bowl of boko. Like this is our third lunch actually. <laughs> yeah, fourth. Three. <laughs> yeah. You think I eat a lot? My parents eat even more. I really like this. All the beef jerkies have like different textures also. So one is crispy, one is soft, one's chewy. It kind of tastes like Hong Kong beef and yang. Yeah. Like Chinese style beef jerky. So this is a very popular Vietnamese dessert called Che and it's a coconut yogurt pudding almost. And inside there's like grass jelly, coconut flakes, some chia seeds and just uh, miscellaneous like fruits. Coconut yogurt is actually really nice. I love coconut desserts. It's like a coconutty version of a uh, bubble tea. Tapioca pearls are all like quite sticky and chewy and we like that almost gluttonous texture. Mm. Most importantly, not too sweet. You know, a good banh mi by the crispiness of the baguette. Wow. Mm. It's so 
airy and light. So I got the mixed plate with a bunch of Vietnamese ham, hot dogs, pork balls, coriander, hot sauce, mayonnaise, and a good smear of Vietnamese pate. And this place is called Bam Mi Pate. And for a reason, because this pate is slapping. Mm. And the bread though. Bam Mi bread is like rice and sushi. It's like 80% of the bite. Delicious. Delicious. It's so cheap. And this one is the egg one. So this is kind of like the eggy pork sauces mixture. And you can see the pate on the bottom and the mayonnaise and the hot sauce on top. Mm. The thing with Vietnamese charcuterie is that the texture is a lot more spongier. And it has like a squishy texture to it. And the flavor of the meat isn't as strong. It's not really that filling though. To me, this is like a snack. Pizza, what you do is get a rice paper and you roast it over fire, put a quail egg, spread it out thin so that the egg cooks evenly, and then add like pork floss, chashu, a little corn mixture, and sweet chili. Really crunchy, a little spicy, sweet. It's mainly just like the flavor of the sweet chili. It just tastes like nachos with sweet chili. the traditional banh mi so that I can compare from the last place also. And can I also get a Milo? Yes. I want to compare two banh mi places so that you guys will know which one is the better banh mi especially in the inner circle of Hanoi so this one is called banh mi pho it was slightly more expensive but literally everywhere I went today banh mi pho packaging was littered all around the city so it was a clue that I had to get a sandwich here not as crunchy as the other one like the other one was so airy and light and fluffy that it just immediately it immediately deflated like your childhood dream of becoming president. There's more filling to it, so maybe that's why. Because the more filling, the heartier the bread has to be in order to hold up. I like that it has pickles because it adds like a nice acidic element to it. But this place is not spicy, there's no hot sauce. And to me, it's a little bit lacking. I would much prefer like lighter banh mi's with a light smear of pate so that it's like really crunchy and fluffy, but this one's just a little bit too dense for me, so I much prefer the other one. It's not gonna eat though, but the Milo is supposed to be only 15,000 dong. Because it's the holidays, they raised the prices to 25,000 dong. I'm surprised that there's like a holiday price and a non holiday price. Classic Milo. It can never go wrong. to the most during my Hanoi trip just because of the scarcity. Like you really can't get this in North America or anywhere else outside of Vietnam. Maybe if you have like Vietnamese connects, but I don't. Essentially, Ban Quan is kind of like Vietnamese version of the Cantonese chung phun. It's a steamed rice roll and you use the rice flour and water and make a batter and then pour it over like a hot plate and then you thin it out almost like a crepe using the back of your ladle and make a thin layer and you steam it with the lid on and you add additional layer just so that it has enough thickness to be rolled around and you have this like long spatula and you fold it on the sides and add toppings like beef, crispy onions and voila! Wow. 
So this is beef and woodier mushroom. It's a little salty, it's savory. A bunch of umami coming from the fried onion, the salty beef, and the mushrooms, along with like the fish sauce concoction that you just kind of like gently dip in. It is so good. It's Vietnamese ham. And you make this by wrapping the ham in banana leaves so you get this really nice aroma. Shout out to Bali in Dallas because they had the best Vietnamese ham I've ever tried, ever. And this is comparable. This is really, really good. There's almost like a cinnamony note to it, which you wouldn't expect from ham, but it's actually really nice. I really love that every Vietnamese dish has herbs on the side and in my head I'm just thinking like it's basically a salad so fragrant so fresh Vietnamese food is like the epitome of simplicity at its best there's actually a lot of similarities between Vietnamese food and Chinese food I'm not saying this because I'm racist but it's actually because of its history because of the immigrant culture you can see a lot of similarities between Vietnamese food and Chinese more so Cantonese like southern Chinese food Good morning! It is our day two in Hanoi and today's like the day after the fireworks for Lunar New Year so everything's a little bit sleepy except for the coffee shop. Look at the coffee shop right in front of St. Joseph's Cathedral. <laughs> Four thousand steps yesterday, so I slept like a baby. Ever since somebody posted those like feet pics of me, I only wear covered. No more toesicles. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. <laughs> I'm decked out of all of my like parents' clothes. <gasps> so many good dogs. Wow. ordered the bun ok and the bun ryu and ryu translates to crab meat and bun ok are snails this is a hanoi specialty and it's basically a tomato based pho with snails and i know it sounds a bit weird and it looks really freaky but i'm excited to try especially because i know anthony bourdain tried it in his hanoi episode and this was what i was curious to try Honestly, anywhere you go, even in like the most randomest street stalls, the broth is really good. And I like that when I ordered it, I thought I was gonna get like a bun ryu and a bun ok separately, but the owner put both of it in, so you get kind of like best of both worlds. I didn't expect the crab meat to be so crumbly though. It almost looks like cooked um, fish eggs. Some of the toppings are fried tofu. Tofu is really good. I'm gonna try the snail. I like the texture. It almost has kind of like a rusty taste to it. It has a lot of like earthiness. It kind of tastes like dirt. But I think it's a flavor that I can get used to if I grew up with it. Right now, I'm, I'm not really that into it. Bunryu reminds me a lot of Chinese uh, si hong shi tang, which is like the tomato-based soup. I like that it's like acidic and bright and fresh. And everything you get is like very light and perfect amount of acidity too. Yesterday when I was walking by, I saw a guy dump in a bunch of this homemade like chili crisp. So I'm gonna put it in. Mmm! Chili crisp is really nice. It adds like a whole different dimension to the dish actually. Just added like another flavoring layer. Bun ryu without chili oil is like level one. I'm gonna try the mystery sauce next to it. Ah, vinegar. It's like garlic vinegar. Putting this in will kind of like make almost like a tom yum like base because you have the spicy, the fishy, and the acidic. Mm. I think a fun way to try all these dishes is 
have it just as is, like 25% of the way, and then start adding like different flavoring agents so that you feel like you get like three in one bowl. on like the Southeast Asian version of Uber, which is called Grab. And there's a function on Grab to check on motorbike. And essentially you hold on to dear life to your uh, motorbike and you just sit in the back. <laughs> but it's so fucking cool. Oh. Japan. Oh. Huh? Korea. Korea, not Japan. Uh. That's our colonizer. Happy New Year! <laughs> Thank you! Bye bye! Frank Bailey. Let's go! Yeah, make it look, make it look, make it look easy. Hey, stand up, guy, boy, I'm 10 toes! Big body pull up in a range roll. I can change the whole game when I say so. I pull up, shut it down, yeah, they know. Money in this game and it came for me. I never switched to no change in me. The only thing changing this season, you go against me, then you know that you tweaking, okay? Cause baby, I'm him, I be on 10. Two stepping in the party, I do not dance. Watch how I move, make it look easy. Counting up wins, that's part of the plan. Black male taking up my head is a CC. That can't fail, I'm not the reason for repeat. I'm knee deep, need a dub, that's it, you seek me. I'm too sick, yeah, I know I make it look easy. Yeah, tell them Oh, this, this. Ah, thank you. Come on. So you can get chicken feet, wings, thighs, gizzard. I'm gonna get one of each. And also some bread, just bun me. I feel like every culture has protein on a stick. And for some reason, everything tastes better on a stick. I'm gonna start with the chicken thighs first. Mm, wow. I'm gonna dip it in the sauce and try it again. Mm, and the outside is super crispy and smoky. And they put like a sweet sticky glaze while they're charring it so it gets really nice and caramelized. And that smokiness in the char is just, and the chicken is perfectly cooked too. It's juicy, it's not dry at all. And there's so much technique in making sure that the skin is crispy and well charred and caramelized while the chicken stays juicy and moist. And you can see that the lady is just kind of almost like a pit master. She's constantly manning the fire, she's grilling, she's flipping everything. She's making sure every protein is basted. And she's not taking her eyes off the fire. Like it's honestly such a good cook on the chicken. I'm super impressed, like super, super impressed with the technique on this. Wow. Cheers. Actually, the hot sauce tastes one-to-one, -one, like Valentina. I like that it's like super acidic and almost like has like a fermented taste to it. I'm gonna try the chicken feet next. Most of the meat is on the paws, like right here, on the palms. This is where you want to hit. What's actually different about Vietnamese chicken feet versus Korean chicken feet is that Vietnamese chicken feet are much bigger. It's also a lot tougher and the tendons are more like better developed. I like a tougher, more, more bite to my chicken feet. So this is right up my alley instead of it just being like super jello-like. It's actually quite fun to just like gnaw through the tendons. Don't yuck my yum. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay. And they also have banh mi on the menu, which is just bread. And they also grilled this with a little bit of oil and just like roast it. And it gets super crispy, kind of like flattened it thin. I think mainly because you want to be able to skewer in the bread and if it's too fluffy, it's gonna burn on the side. So it's almost like a panino, which is the plural of panini, which is something you should know if you're a foodie. Mm. It has like a sweet glaze that's like basted on top of the bread and then toasted. I'm assuming it's the sugar glaze that's helping the caramelization happen a lot more evenly on the bread, also the chicken and the sauces and everything. So you kind of have this almost creme brulee like first crunch when you bite into the banh mi. I'm gonna try the gizzard next. Mmm. I love gizzard. It has like minerally taste. And this one, there's a lot of red pepper flakes that's put on top and it's like Vietnamese red pepper. So it's quite spicy, nice bite to it, but definitely spicy even for me who can handle spice. And you can only really do cooked gizzard if the chicken is really fresh. So it means that they have like a great chicken supplier, which makes sense because it's a grilled chicken restaurant. But to be honest, I'm much more of like a thigh guy than a wing guy. So thick thighs save lives. Like the smoke is permeating through the air. It's like super smoky in this street and everyone's just like huddled in a small plastic chair and eating. Great vibes. Uh, two more thighs, please. Good morning. We're starting off the day with some street kanji and on top is yo tiao. I said it was go tiao in my last video and got roasted by the Chinese community. Well, gong si fa chai, this is yo tiao. So kanji is rice porridge and it's warm and sticky and slimy, but it's just like really soothing to your stomach because it's a lot of water incorporated with starch. So this is like the food that any Asian would eat if they have like gastroenteritis or if you have food poisoning because it's just really easily digestible and it's a great breakfast item. Mm. And the toppings for this one is some shredded boiled chicken. So what I thought was actually just like rice and water. The broth is actually chicken stock, which makes the kanji really flavorful. And using the leftover protein, she shredded it on top as kind of like a topping along with some yo tiao. And the kind of like ropey looking thing on top is a dehydrated shredded chicken floss. That flavor of chicken is in the broth from the bones, the protein as topping, and another layer of concentrated chicken flavor from the chicken floss. And chicken floss tastes like chicken skin, just really concentrated and salty. So you don't really need any salt for this. Like the floss on top is your flavoring agent. Mmm. And the yotiao on top helps like absorb all that. And it's another like textural element to an otherwise very just like slimy and homogenous kanji. Delicious. So good. Mash down. Our first bowl of pho bo, which is beef pho. And on top are some green onions and chives. Very simple. The broth, noodles, and beef on top. When she was making the pho, what I realized was that she cooks the beef, like the topping beef, into the stock soup. So you keep adding more layers of flavor as the day goes by. So I'm assuming by the end of the day, that broth is gonna be super concentrated and incredibly beefy. Ah, imagine that. Wow, very good. The broth is insanely good. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of lime just to brighten it up a bit. This broth is definitely a little more on like the saltier beefy side than the more like aromatic one. Honestly, my like biggest pet peeve for when people eat pho is when they pour poison and sriracha into the broth. I feel like that's an immediate deal breaker for me because you have this like beautiful soup that you simmer on like a rolling low simmer for a long ass time and you get this beautiful broth. And when you dump all that sauce in it, it just breaks my heart. Yeah, because we've been walking around a lot, 
from place to place. By the time I go to the new place, I get really hungry, so it looks like I can eat a lot, and I actually am. I love beef pho. If I put beef pho against chicken pho, like pho bo versus pho ga, I think it depends on the day, but today I'm definitely feeling beefy. We're on our way to breakfast number three because when in Hanoi, you gotta eat. So the birthplace of Bun Cha is in Hanoi. And what I really like about this place is that on the side, you get this whole big ass bowl of chilies and garlic. So this is very much right up our Korean alley. Bun Cha, you can almost think of it like Tukemen, in a sense that you dip the noodles into the concentrated broth. So this is one of the three restaurants that you have to come in Hanoi for Bun Cha. The filling inside the sauce is actually quite interesting. So there's this like almost radish looking thing. It's a little spicy. It almost has like a wasabi like flavor. And the bitterness and the spiciness kind of hits you at the end. But it complements with like the meatiness and the oiliness really well. I'm gonna try one of the meatballs. Mm -hmm. So this place has been open since 1966 and they've been serving only one thing on the menu and it's bun cha. And so much Vietnamese basil on the side too. Everything's just so fresh. My wish has been fulfilled. If you come to Hanoi and don't eat bun cha, you're really missing out. This is the thing that you need to try when in Hanoi because it's where it was developed. And there's also a variety of meats too. So you have the grilled pork that's sliced thin. You also get some of the meatballs. You get the vegetable along with the fresh herbs. And the combination is so addicting. And that like perfect amount of oiliness that rises to the top makes the whole dish so like luxurious almost. Wow. <laughs> and I'm loving the DIY garlic action too. By adding the minced garlic at the end, it adds like a really nice punchiness and pungentness to the dish. Mm. The sauce is actually warm. Oh, I thought it was cold. Yeah, I thought it was going to be cold too, but they were boiling the sauce next to it, like simmering it. I'm going to dip in the fried meat rolls also. Super crispy. It's like a multi-layered dish. There's something grilled, there's something fresh, there's something fried, there's something pickled. And all those different elements work incredibly well to flavor this puncha. Look how thick this roll is too. I just know that it's going to be like shatteringly crisp. I just really like them. Crispy, it's oily, it's warm and welcoming. It's so good. This is what coconut water is supposed to taste like. Ah, no my soul. It's so sweet and almost like buttery. Very hydrating. I love coconut water. And my favorite part is like eating the flesh off with the straw. Actually, this one, the pulp is not great. To me, it tastes like brown sugar. Yeah. Good. Very fresh. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Thank, thank you. So much. Come on. Come on. Wow. Mmm. <laughs> doesn't really taste like much. It really just tastes like radish. Because I think this is like a young coconut. I'm finally trying the Vietnamese egg coffee. Because it's such a popular menu item, they have like a whipping mixer just constantly going to make sure that they always have some fresh egg cream. It tastes like the foamy mascarpone. It's that meringue and the fluffiness 
and the creaminess of the egg and the velvety yolk just makes the whole coffee so luxurious. It really tastes like the best part of tiramisu. Everything but the lady fingers. Dark, yeah. And this one is their signature sugarcane coffee. So they make a freshly squeezed sugarcane juice and put two shots of espresso over it. And they also cut in some rosemary too. Mm. It tastes like brown sugar coffee. It's like all that really dark molassy notes and the coffee. But honestly, the best part about this place is that you can go upstairs and, and I love the decoration because it makes you feel like you're in a Vietnamese home. Very cute. I love the bamboo architecture. Best of all is people watching from upstairs. Sometimes at night, you just want something crispy. And this alley knows that need of yours and created a whole street of only fried food. So we got the combo one, which comes with cheese sticks, some crispy pork, and some french fries, and an assortment of sauces on the side. And I like the presentation of it. It's just kind of like dumped all in one. I guess this is the equivalent of spice bags in Ireland, where you fry a bunch of different things and you put in different sauces and salts and mix it all together. It's not oil that they fried all of this in. It's margarine. Holy shit. I don't think I've had anything completely deep fried in margarine before. Wow. Everything tastes super buttery. Super buttery. You know those movie theater butter pumps? It feels like the whole dish is just completely smothered in butter. And this actually took me by surprise a bit because I was just expecting like very regular french fries but it tastes like i'm eating a whole block of butter it's good y'all it just caught me by surprise okay i'm gonna try the fried pork now i'm gonna dip it in the spicy sauce it's like a pork sausage mm. so inside it's like really squishy and chewy tastes a lot like chinese sausage it's really well spiced a lot of black pepper crispy on the outside, a mixture of like sausage and sweet and sour pork. And with the spicy sauce, it's actually really nice. Honestly, it's like the perfect beer snack. It's still pretty early in the night, so I'm gonna skip out on the beer right now. So I ordered instead chakwat. It's made with kalamansi, which is the citrus fruit that you'll find in most of Southeast Asia. Think of it as kind of like a mix between lime and yuzu. It's really perfumed and super acidic, and it's one of my favorite citrus fruits ever. There's really nothing like it. Super refreshing lemonade. The calamansi has sort of like a green citrus note to it, and it's really like the perfect acidity to cut through some of the greasy margarine fried things. Mozzarella stick, I'm gonna dip it in this black sauce right here. Mm. This is Maggi. I've actually also never tried Maggi with fried foods. It's good. For those who've never tried Maggi before, it's like an um, MSG version of soy sauce, super packed with umami, and it kind of like makes you lick your lips and hungry for more. And it's just like really salty, umami filled the sauce that complements really well with fried food. It's very fun. I can imagine myself coming here, stumbling at like 2 a.m., craving exactly this. Margarine fried fries, cheese sticks, and some crispy pork. Finally got some panseo. This is one of my mom's favorite dishes. And there's shrimp and squid inside. There's spring onions, bean sprouts to really like amp up the volume of the panseo. So the batter for the panseo is made with rice flour, coconut milk, and a little bit of turmeric to give it that yellow sheen and that beautiful crispy color. Super crispy. Mm. 
and incredibly, incredibly thin. So after he pours over the pattern, you crack an egg in and then swirl it around so that it kind of has this almost like a coated layer so it doesn't get soggy. And then you add the vegetables and the seafood and it's able to hold up and fold in half because of that double layer. And a little bit of sweetness coming through with the coconut milk also. Now I'm gonna have it the OG way, which says right here. So this is rice paper, and then you layer it with herbs. I'm gonna do a little bit of mint, a bit of perilla. So this is a little different from Korean perilla, which we call kenni. This is shiso, so it's a bit more herbal. It's in the same family, but you can know that it's a different type by looking at the back side of the leaf. If it's purple, it's gonna have that like more perfumed flavor. And the shiso is more prevalent in Japanese cooking, whereas just regular perilla, like this one, is more prevalent in Korean cooking. But today I'm gonna do mint, a little bit of perilla, a bit of basil as well. Put the banseo inside, like this, and then you roll. Like all good things in life, it's wrapped. Why? Actually, the rice paper, it's like super not soggy and it's just like very paper-like when you first like roll it, but the heat coming from the panseo actually makes it more pliable. I've only seen rice paper where, you know, it comes around and you have to dip it in warm water to make it more malleable, I guess. But this is interesting. And then I'm gonna dip it into the nok nam. It's crispy, it's soft, it's a little sweet, super well perfumed coming from the shiso and all the herbs. I can't wait for dessert. The shop next to here sells the dessert that I really, really, really wanted to try. So we're gonna hop over after we're done with the bansu. Clean Bowl Club. And I just realized my sweater is literally the same color as the bansu that we just ate. Just a little bit of turmeric and coconut cream. We're getting che, we're getting che. Actually, fun fact, you pronounce my name like che, not choi, even though it's spelled C-H-O-I. And I always say, think of it as like Che Guevara, Tina Che Guevara, also sounds badass. Okay, so Che is the dessert that I've been looking forward to eating and this is the place they've been closed during Tet but today it's open because it's the third day and it looks so good. Everything looks so slimy and gooey and I love it. I love it. So I ordered Ban Tro Chow, which is this one and inside you'll see these two gigantic steaming balls. Not the best descriptor of food but you know what I mean. So this is kind of like the Vietnamese rendition of Tang Yuan, which makes sense because there's a lot of Chinese influence during colonization and also a lot of immigrants moving down to Vietnam. Okay, I'm gonna take a bite. Ooh, it smells really cinnamony. Hmm, center is like almost like a chestnutty filling inside. And the broth is like a sweet, a bit thick soup, but it tastes a lot like porchata. You get a strong flavor of cinnamon and it has like the creaminess coming in from the coconut as well. And also a punch of ginger coming through. So think of porchata, but warm with ginger and rice balls. This is actually really good. This one's like a black sesame filling inside. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Yum, so yum. And you can see like how popular this place is. It's also a tradition during New Year's to have um, rice cakes, so it's extra poppin', extra poppin'. And this is che, my favorite dessert in Southeast Asia. There's also very similar versions of it in the Philippines with Halo Halo. It's a fruit cocktail you can think of. So this dark one is grass jelly, a little bit of pandan noodles. So pandan is what gives it that green color. And it's a sweet potato filling. Coconut milk over with some ice. And this is such a refreshing dessert. Think of it similar to boba. Like if you like boba, this is like the next step up that you need to try. The first time I ever had grass jelly was in Singapore. And like at first I was like, oh, 
like iffy about it just because it looks like licorice and I hate licorice but it's very far from it's like sweet and a little like mild more like tree sap flavor and I don't know what that means but trust me like when you have it like you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about good morning another day in Hanoi another day of banh mi to start off the morning I couldn't resist walking by this banh mi stall car because he grills the pork on the charcoal grill instead of it just being like already pre-grilled so the smell of the pork burning and the smokiness is just like permeating the street anyone who's like walking down the street is like turning their heads like that oh it looks super juicy my favorite bread so far is still banh mi pate because it has like the crispiest, the fluffiest bread. But I think this place has my favorite filling so far. I love the smokiness and kind of like the burnt ends of the pork. What he does is he like char grills the pork and then in order to get it like even crispier and to bring it up to temperature, he deep fries it very quickly. So it has this almost like a velvety texture, which makes the meat really tenderized, but also crispy at the same time. And because the pork is so hot, when he smears on that mayonnaise, it almost like melts in a creamy consistency. And with the hot sauce, like everything's like really warm. It's a very like hearty banh mi. And I like that it has like a lot of um, different pickled veg. On a scale of uh, which one's my favorite, I think this one comes at second. I still think that banh mi pate has the best banh mi I've tried. Mm. And I think banh mi pate, what they do really well is the pate itself is so flavorful. Yeah, it's the also very good. Really good. Yeah, filling is actually really good. It's like a different type of banh mi. Like this focuses more on like, like the filling ingredients, whereas banh mi pate is very much like a light snack. So I ordered bantom and banggoi. So bantom are these uh, shrimp fritters. There's like a whole piece of shrimp in it and it kind of looks like if a dumpling tried to eat a shrimp. Outside it, tail on, head on, everything, the whole shrimp and the shebang. And then, and this one right here is banggoi. It almost looks like an empanada that's deep fried. And the filling seems to be very similar to what we've seen in all the Vietnamese fried meat rolls. So woodier mushroom, some radish glass noodles and carrots and pork. Looks really good. Dipping is some nok nam. So it's not just woody or mushrooms, it's just mushrooms. It's really mushroomy and actually very different from all the fried meat rolls. It's not so heavy on the meat, it's more of like a stuffed mushroom empanada that's been deep fried. Oh, it's really good. It almost has like a truffle scent. And the dough is like a wonton wrapper dough. So it's like super crispy, very airy and bubbly and he deep fries it. So he fries it once just to cook everything and then deep fries it the second time when an order comes through to achieve like this like super crispy texture. Now it's time to try the ban dong. This is what we mainly came here for. I'm not sure what the filling is and it's my first time trying it. So, so it's like a little bit of rice flour dough on one side and like a piece of shrimp put on top like sushi. You shape it like a sushi mold and then deep fry it. I think it reminds me a lot of like a ricotta dumpling. Very soft and pillowy and airy. And the shrimp is like really crispy. You don't have to take the peel off because it's fried at such a high temperature. So the skin just becomes super crispy. Two more bun, uh, ban goi. Such a busy street. So good. We had to order more. So this one's another shape of ban goi, but this one's more of a predominant meat filling. Mm. It's like a pepper pork filling. It's really good, but I prefer the mushroom one. The mushroom one's really good. Try this one. We're seriously addicted to calamansi at this point. And there's even like a quail egg inside and a piece of lap seong. So this is a Chinese sausage. It's like a egg roll wrapper. Yeah, the mushroom one is so good. Very healthy fried food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one's like more like a wonton wrapper. And whereas this one's more like a egg roll wrapper. No, this is essentially just um, fried wonton. I love that every street food stall has herbs on the side. Uh, this is something that I'm really gonna miss when I go back to Korea. And all the herbs are so like young and tender too. 
Honestly, 100 hours was not enough time to satiate my love for Hanoi and its incredible street food. It's the only city where you'll eat the best bowl of noodles while crouching in a small plastic stool next to mopeds passing right next to you. Thank you Hanoi for the great food, hospitality, and another special thanks to Vietnamese doobies that sent recommendations our way. We had an amazing time in Hanoi, thanks to you. Mwah. Love you and see you actually Sunday. I'll be reading Philippines' most coveted fast food chain. What is it gonna be?